G'day guys, welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today I have a video called Dating Apps Right in My Brain by a creator called Amanda Mariana um, that will, I think, touch on some good talking points for us to have a discussion about how social media uh, can rot the minds of both men uh, and women. It's balanced, so I'll talk about how it affects women and how it affects men from my experiences and my opinions. You were just like served content. And so I think like if you hear stuff enough, even if you don't necessarily fully agree with it or believe in it, it will sort of infiltrate your brain. And I think that's what happened to me with TikTok and dating advice. I would see these videos of women saying like, never go on a date with a man who suggests a coffee date because he's broke and low value. And I'd be yeah, like, okay, yeah, I've been on coffee dates. They aren't the worst thing in the world. And I know that logically, but that information would still seep into my head. The next, Like if someone asked me to go on a coffee date, I'd be like, uh, I'd already like have a negative like feeling about it just because of that content I consume. So that's what I- Yeah, I think she makes a really good point there. And I think it's great that she can reflect and critically look at information being served up to her and also reflect on the way that it made her feel. Because guys, I'll talk about it from, um, from a male perspective, okay? A lot of you guys out there um, uh, may have come across a lot of pretty hard line, okay, red pill male content. I think some of that content is very good. It's very helpful, it's very useful. It puts me on the right path to understanding men's issues and improving. On the other hand, you have a lot of channels uh, who do create hate and rage bait type content, okay? And all of it is negative uh, and there's no balance uh, in what has been provided to you. There's no balanced opinion. It's all women this, all women do this, all women gonna get you, etc. okay? And so when you start seeing all that content, it makes you angry. It makes you mad because you believe that that is the way the world truly is and that all women are truly like that. I've never said on this channel all women are like that. And I'd say, I wouldn't say my channel is hardcore red pill or anything like that. It has red pill themes and elements, but I like to critically look at information and discuss it and look at it from angles um, based on my own experience in life. Okay, so guys out there who watch a lot of this content, try and apply it also to your own experiences, whether when you, what that you see in your own life, because not all women are out to get you and destroy you, but it does, and it's good to be aware of. It does happen a lot more than what we would like to think, okay, and what society tells us. So I'm not discounting it. I'm just saying it's not everybody. I want to talk about in this video how TikTok dating advice has, I think, really messed up my view on dating and also just in general, exclusively dating on dating apps has messed up my view of dating. I think dating apps are like having a moment right now where people are really hating it. People are really wanting to turn to in-person alternatives to meeting people, whether it's like speed dating events or just like hitting on people in public or of course going to a run club. I also feel like someone who has literally just like started dating when dating apps were already widely popular and available and basically like only has dated through dating apps. I think that has like fundamentally changed the way I approach dating and I don't think it's like for the best. Usually I do a lot more scripting and research for my videos, but this one's just going to be personal, anecdotal vibes, so. Let's get the vibes. It's all about Dennis Denudo, guys, Dennis Denudo. So I think she makes actually some really good points here. Uh, and she is quite you know, analytical, looking in, looking under the surface a little bit. I, I agree with her 100% on the dating apps. As someone, I was really successful on them, but I saw the worst of people. And from my experience, obviously, I don't date men, so I'm seeing the worst of women and their behaviors on there. And it can really twist the way you look at women and dating in general, because online dating, it's not dating it's the worst the worst of human nature it's people hiding behind screens and fake personas on the internet that's all it is you know people not valuing connections with other human beings men and women and women i reckon even more so than men and this comes from a place of just what i've been told and my experiences like you can quite easily be in real life a really well put together human being a really good man you've got you know a lot going for you in life, you've been successful, whatever it is, people like you, you've got great friends, and you go on a dating app 
and you're just another face, you're just another photo, okay? That gets constantly rejected, so that can make a guy really bitter towards dating. And I can understand for women too, because women go on there, they have, they do have all the options in the world. I think a lot of the issue with women on dating apps is the curse of choice. Now, there's just too much choice to be able to pick, take one off and settle down because maybe the next one will be better. It's like a lottery. And I can understand that too. As someone who was quite successful with meeting people um, on dating apps and, and, and meeting them in real life from dating apps, one thing happens, you cut them, okay? They do something you don't like, gone. Because you know what? You can just replace them pretty quick um, if you are someone who is marketable on a dating app. I know not everyone can do that, so I'm not saying that's the thing, but I can understand it from a woman's view because I do believe I had a lot of options, um, nothing like a woman would ever have, but you can understand the mentality of maybe the next one will be better, maybe the next one I'll like it because I had that experience on there. But dating apps are designed to keep you on there. They're addictive, uh, they give you a dopamine rush when you match, all that sort of stuff. They serve you up uh, people from a, what it feels like an infinite pool of people. So it's almost like a lottery system that they create that keeps men and women coming back to them. They don't want you off them. They want men and women spending money on them. I mean, I know it's obvious that people think that those places are there to help you, but they really feed on and are really predatory on people's wants and desires to, to meet people. And they play on the human psychology incredibly well to keep people on. Let's get into it. I wanna take a brief pause to thank Parade for sponsoring today's video. I don't know if y'all are aware of this, but turning 18, I had absolutely no dating history to speak of, no bitches, no hoes, phone was dry. <laughs> <laughs> of course I had crushes, did they like me back? Did they know I exist? Absolutely not. I also have that trauma of like, being a black girl at predominantly white schools all my life. To sum up that experience, you can just watch this short film I made. Because of like getting absolutely no play, no attention in high school, I was very excited to like go to college and start dating. And I think most people are, and I don't know if this is like normal or not, but specifically when I went to college, I was like, I'm gonna download um, dating app like, right away because to me it felt like a shortcut like even though college yeah in college right um i can't speak for this i never lived on campus or did anything like that but i could understand it you're with all these young people in this confined space imagine all the matches and shit you'll get there goes off in college um yeah like oh women get up to all sorts at university college it happens all over the world uh, i think that's another thing a lot of guys don't understand your girlfriend's going away to board uh, and stay at a university or college far away from you. You better keep your eyes open, champ. College is supposed to be the place where you're with a bunch of people who are your age, who you could potentially date. Because dating apps were so popular at that time, this was like 2018, I was like, oh, I can just download a dating app. I can like bypass this whole thing of even meeting someone, having a crush on them or being friends with them. Like I can just go to the source, make my profile, find someone who's attracted to me and go on a date. Like so much more simple than just like navigating life and finding someone naturally. And it really was that simple and easy. Like I just made a profile, started swiping and like within a day you can like be on a date and i think because that was within a day i mean as a woman you could be on a date within two hours an hour um you know guys if you have friends um who are female on the dating apps get them to show you their profile and how many likes and matches and attention they get even if they're just normal run-of-the-mill women nothing special like this girl all you dirty muscle hunters at home you'd be all over that i know what you're into okay uh, you should have a thousand year guys in her match just trying to get in there, telling her how great she is and all that sort of stuff. I'm going to say that's one of the main reasons. There's two reasons I think as a man, because a lot of women are not going to understand it. I think they understand it from too much choice and then they get they get used up by the chads and all that on the dating apps. We all know that, okay? Because they go for the best of the best and of what they can get, which is human nature, okay? And they can't lock it down. But from the male perspective, how does a dating app 
rot your brain. I think you can do it in one or two ways. They're going to be they're going to be two camps here. Okay, they're going to be guys who just have no success at all. Okay, and I'm going to say together there are three camps. So let's go to the left. You get the guys who um maybe below average looking, uh, not great at marketing themselves, want to have great style and all that, and they create a profile. And they don't get really any attention at all on the dating apps. They can't get anything. It's soul destroying for them, okay? You can understand that. And so then they get bitter. They start hating women or they start hating dating and start getting really negative with dating, okay? That's because of the dating apps. People can blatantly just be rejected and feel rejected constantly. It's always in your hand. You're getting rejected. People don't want you. Then you got... The person who gets a little bit of limited success, but it gets with women who don't treat him well. This is my friend Larry. I always talk about Larry. F F in the comments for Larry. Love him to death. Fantastic guy. Best guy I've probably ever met. Then too much of a nice guy. So he's pretty well put together um, on paper, um, and he does attract you know women. W women want to meet him, go out with him. But Larry's attention. He's needy, okay? Like, like when he gets a woman who matches with him um, and wants to meet up with him, he goes all in with them, okay? He goes all in, fully commits, buddy, from date one that he's going to be their boyfriend and he starts talking to me about fucking, oh, gee, man, she's got a kid, so I don't know how that's going to work out when um, you know, I've got to move my kids into a house. He starts talking about all this shit that's like way in the future, but his mind's already gone there after one date or he's rooted her once. He's already gone there. So these guys like him... They get used up, abused, treated like shit. Because regardless of what women will tell him or tell you guys on the dating apps, they're not willing to feel like they're settling for someone who gives it up that easy. Which then takes across to the guys. Um, I had this experience. I didn't care. Um, I was pretty, uh, in a stage of my life as well, post-divorce, I did on a Hulk Hogan heel turn. I didn't give a fuck, really. I was just on the dating apps tearing it up, okay? And that really showed me a lot about how people aren't valued, both from my own experience, like, you know, just getting rid of girls. They've annoyed me, piss them off. Let's get another one. You know, it's, yeah, let's get another one. Like you go down the shops and buy a new pair of shoes when your shoes have got a hole in them or something like it. That's the way it becomes. Highly transactional as well. You don't get what you want out of it. Highly transactional. But then also, you burn out on it. Like it does something to your fucking brain. Okay, like it really, I've talked about this in my previous monster hunting video that I made. You can check it out, guys. I did a vlog on it. Monster hunting is serial dating on dating apps. Eventually, it gets to you. Like it stuffs the wiring up in your brain. I don't think as a human being, we're supposed to be doing that. I don't know. They say, yeah, men are supposed to spread seed far and wide and bang everything. Sure. But I don't think it was never intended in our design to be coming across this many People, if you're successful enough to be able to do that, to just run run trains through all the slurries out there. So that fucks your head up. And that's why, guys, my brain, I was becoming like a super villain. Okay. I was becoming really cold and and just not I was I wasn't a bad person, but I didn't have really integrity with what I was doing and I didn't like the way I was living. So yeah, it rotted my brain. Okay. Stop doing it. I've been off it for like drugs. It's like cold turkey off drugs for like three, four years. I had enough. Yes, I do see, still see women, but I'm not on dating apps. I'm not doing that, okay? Very discerning with what I do. It's my first experience of dating. I was like... Before we get started, guys, about halfway through. So if you're enjoying this type of content, let me know. Um, a bit more of a balanced view as opposed to just bagging chicks blatantly out. Um, yeah, but if you enjoy the content, please subscribe, aiming for 10k subs, so with your help, I can get there sooner rather than later, and you can be a part of the growth journey of the channel. If you do want to support the channel further and like what I am doing, please, um, yeah, check out the Patreon, link in the description, um, or alternatively, guys, just watch my videos through, like, comment, and interact. Let YouTube pay me, um, but the, for, the, for them to get me out there, you just got to get the um, view duration up on the video, so I'm not going to bullshit you, that's just the way it works. Why would I not do this? Like, this is so easy. This is so streamlined. This is so simplified. It kind of just like optimizes the process of getting to go on a date. And that's what I desperately wanted. Unfortunately, in the process, I developed a crippling dependency to external validation from these dating apps yeah. because 
I don't know, when you like match with someone, you get that little sound and it sends yep. a rush of dopamine to your head. And you know, someone thinks you're cute. Someone thinks you're attractive. I didn't realize in the moment, but I developed like such an addiction to the external validation that just came from being liked on dating apps. I And that's the experience of men guys, and she's already telling you straight from her mouth is so she she enjoyed the dopamine rush, the initial hit, the initial contact. But what what a lot of guys experience, I've experienced heaps too. I'm not immune to it. And I'm not some super chat, I'm just a normal guy who was just a dirty bastard on the dating apps and spent a lot of too much time on them probably. What'll happen is you'll get a match, they'll get excited, they want to talk to you, and eventually that's fade off. Not eventually, that happens pretty quick because a new match has come up, the sounds come up again, boom, the thing comes up on the screen. I've been guilty of doing this, I know what it's like. Too much choice. Too much stuff going off in the brain, rotting your brain. Not valuing a person who wants to get to know you. And that's why guys make fun of women a lot on the dating apps, and why I do sometimes as well, is you have all the choice in the world, you're just not going to get the top of the top, just drop your standards a little bit, be a, a reasonable human being, and you will have that many guys, especially with technology, more than what you could have ever had, who would love to go out with you, take you out, and be that romantic gentleman. Not everyone watches this content, not everybody you know, is red-pilled to an extent, or, or, or understands it, or unplugged, as you might want to say, as other creators say. So they have the world at their fingertips, and they blow it. And that's what she's saying here. I use Tinder as a dating app because that's what I thought it was. Little did I know it really was a hookup app. So I was very confused in those early days when I went on three dates with someone and they did not want to marry me. At this time of using dating <laughs> apps early on, I definitely wanted to be in a relationship. I wanted to get a boyfriend because to me, that would solve all my problems. I don't know why I thought this. <laughs> It meant finding a permanent solution to my lack of external validation. So I was relentless. I went on so, so many dates. Wow. And of course, nobody wanted to be in a relationship with me because a lot of these people were not looking for a relationship. I yeah. definitely thought there was something deeply wrong with me because I was like, how am I going on all these dates? And like, literally no one wants to be my boyfriend like that. I love that. But is she, is she saying how many guys that she also got pumped and dumped by? And, and the thing is too, Guys, women are going on a lot of dates. Um, this is uh, one of the big pills that I really swallowed, especially post-divorce and, and having a lot of success on the dating apps. Is women are going on a lot of dates with different guys and bang them, like first night, second night. But you don't know that. Uh, they, they do it in the dark. They they hide behind the cricket oval and the VN Calais guys. They're like possums in the dark, like cats. You know, they're screeching at night, rooting each other. You know, you're getting banged by Chad in the dark. They never tell you that. She's not, oh, yeah, I was just fucking all these dudes and none of them wanted to be my boyfriend. And that's another thing as well that brings me to another frustration maybe that men, I can tell you from the male experience. So she's frustrated that no one wants to be her boyfriend. She wanted a boyfriend, okay? So they're looking at the end result, not the guy and the process to, to get the boyfriend. And that's another pill that you'll swallow, guys, is women aren't necessarily looking to meet you and have this perfect fairy tale romance that you have in your brain that you think happens naturally yeah it does happen with some people and that's great they're generally looking to fast track a commitment and that's what she was trying to do and getting frustrated and guess what guys get frustrated with they want to go date um, they want to have be a bit more organic and fun they want to have fun along the way women don't want to have fun they do do it but they don't tell you they want to do it um, and it makes it a transactional and in job interview and laborious process for men and some men get really flooded. They're like, wow, she wants to be my boyfriend. But if she wants a boyfriend, it isn't she wants you specifically to be her boyfriend. She wants a boyfriend. She's frustrated. She's willing to take you on because you're you're going to take the job. That's crazy. It even got to the point where I kind of like gave up on actually finding someone I liked. And I literally was like, I just want to start her boyfriend. Like, I just need I just need that first step. Now see, that in see. retrospect, I'm like, what did I even think I would be getting out of that? But truly, like, I just thought like having a boyfriend just makes your life automatically better if you have a boyfriend. Like, I couldn't even tell you, like, why would I want to start a boyfriend? Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> I went on so many dates in college. It was low key my hobby. Like, if I didn't have a plan and I wanted to do something, I would just swipe, 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 swipe. 
find someone to go on a date with. I don't necessarily regret this. It's not like I completely abandoned like personal projects or school or friends or whatever to like go on dates, but I feel like any sort of free unspoken for evening I had, I was just like, well, I should go on a date. And this kind of gets- and This is another point that I'll come to guys. I don't think I'll make a separate video on this. We talk about men being dirty little monster hunters. Women are always on. Women are always looking for guys, potential partners, suitors, boyfriends, you know, the best option. They're always got their eyes open. That's why they're always talking about going to run clubs, bunnings, you know, place where the hot trading men are, you know, go to the finance district. They're looking for the they're looking for marks all the time. Women are always on dating apps, they're always swiping on them all the time. It isn't the guys who as well, yeah, guys are dirty little bastards looking for sex or whatever. These chicks are relentlessly talking to so many guys every single day. You need to understand that. And that's why their brains bloody explode. It's very, very interesting. It's very, very interesting. You know, and she is somewhat self-aware of this. It gets into how I feel like dating apps rotted my brain because... The bad thing about this approach is that I would go on a date with like anyone who would ask me. That was the standard. Like if you ask me to go on a date, like I will go. Like I didn't even consider if I actually liked these people. And that became very apparent because there were so many dates I would go on and I'd show up there and I'd see the person and I'd just be like, no. But for some reason, just like the prospect of like going on a date was so important to me that I didn't even think about who I was going on the date with. And in my head, like I was being picky, like I wasn't just like swiping right on any old Joe, but I think the medium of dating apps made me picky about the wrong things, things that like didn't really matter in terms of compatibility. I wasn't thinking about people's personalities. I was thinking, oh, how tall are they? Mm. What kind of school did they go to? Um, what kind of job do they have? You know, that can like tell you something. Maybe you have similar lifestyles, but it doesn't really tell you anything about if you're gonna enjoy having a conversation with this person. So that gets- As I said, they're always on guys. They're monster hunters, whether they admit it or not. They're always out there looking for a mark. And it's not a negative thing. It's just something to be aware of. Women have always done this, always do it, all right? They're always talking about where to find guys if they're single, okay? It's just something to be aware of. But what did she say? More or less, it explains that, yes, they have too much choice and too much option. So therefore, they're going on dates with guys I don't really like. And that leads to frustration for men because men are going on these dates and spending money and then... They're, these girls aren't talking to them anymore. They're ghosting them for whatever reason, like the, the list of reasons that she gave, okay? They're just indiscriminately going on dates. And so what does that create? Then it creates angry men who are pissed off because they're going on dates and keep getting dumped or rejected or ghosted and spend money when these women never really had an intention to see him again. And so it's almost like the female version of rooting and booting guys. And it happens a lot. gets me into how dating apps rotted my brain i feel like it gave me this mentality of like there is unlimited people out there and it is a numbers game so you just have to keep going everyone is disposable there's always someone new around the corner and i think this led me to spend one way too much time on dating apps i feel like there was points in time where i spent more time on like dating apps than like actual social media because I kind of treated it like that. And it was just like a thing where I'd be constantly searching to get matches. And then also, because I would always be on it and like getting these matches and stuff, I would just have way too many people out of the realm of possibility that I could even speak to. I took this. There you go, guys. I mean, and she's um, not a bad looking girl. She's not ugly, that's for sure. She's got all the options in the world. It just goes to show too much choice and that's how it rots women's brains and then men have this negative experience and it pisses them off, especially when they start to realize what really happens and what the female experience is compared to their own, then guys get all pissed off, okay? And combative and don't want to spend any money on coffee and dates and shit. So it's like a circular reference, okay? Then they can't meet a nice guy because the guy who was originally a nice guy who wanted to date them is now pissed off and angry and is turned into a monster hunter. I love it. 
this class in college that was like literally all about the science of love and one thing that really stood out to me that I remembered from that class was if you have more than nine matches at a time on a dating app, like your brain literally can't compute. You're not able to balance that many conversations and people in your head. And I think that was also a big problem with me on dating apps too. I would- All right guys, this goes on, we're not even halfway through. So that, look, I'm gonna leave it there. If you wanna watch her full video, look, she's very self-aware. She articulates it well. I don't think she's being obnoxious or rude. So don't go over there, write shit in her comments or whatever. Be respectful, please. Um, and yeah, guys, if you're enjoying the content, Play sub. See you in the next one.